What's up guys? Today we are doing the first shelf of my uh, horror sci-fi section. Uh, we're starting off with I Always Know What You Did Last Summer. I know a lot of people are like always respond when they hear about this movie. Uh, this movie doesn't exist. <laughs> Is it was that bad? But I am a completist so I wanted to get the uh, the whole collection. And this was nowhere near as good as the the original two, obviously, none of the cast from the original two are in it either. This was a straight-to-DVD release. So, nothing really to ride home about. So, you're not missing anything if you haven't seen it before. Then we have Vacancy. Uh, when I first saw this movie, this this was this was something. I really liked, enjoyed this movie if you like those kind of horror murder hotel kind of movies this is it and uh luke wilson and tate beckinsale do amazing together 100 percent worth checking out if you haven't seen it before then we have vacancy 2 the first cut uh this was a straight to dvd release uh by sony obviously this was back when sony did a lot of these straight to dvd releases but uh, as far as straight-to-DVD releases go, this was actually really, really good. Uh, up there with the original. So uh, if you're going to see a straight-to-DVD release, this is one that's actually worth checking out. Uh, then we have Supernova. I got this in a mystery box recently. Average. Uh, not the best. I remember watching this as a kid and loving it. But uh, getting older now, I'm not a huge fan of James Spader. But uh, yeah, this this was only average. It wasn't fantastic. I wish Lou Diamond Phillips would have had a bigger part. His character in this movie was actually really good. But uh, only average. Uh, then we have Mimic. Uh, this was actually a really solid, good movie. Uh, great cast. You know, Charles Dutton, Mar Mar Mira Savino. Gilmaro Del Toro directed it, so it was an extremely tense movie. Great original idea. Worth checking out if you haven't seen it before, if you're a fan of, like, the Alien movies. Uh, then we have Mimic 2, which is... Uh, Kind of the opposite. <laughs> a complete dumpster fire. Not that good. Not as bad as three. But uh, but still not good. <laughs> you know, they got a director from Law & Order, the TV series, to direct this movie. So nowhere near as good, obviously, as the original story-wise or directing-wise or budget-wise. <laughs> then we have Joyride. I, this is a great movie. Uh, you know, it's a killer trucker chasing people down who talk to him on the radio. Great cast. You know, Paul Walker was obviously an amazing actor and shows it here. 100% worth checking out if you haven't seen it before. Then we have Joyride 2 Dead Ahead. Uh, this is just like uh, Vacancy. This movie was great as well. You know, uh, Levine, who played uh, the trucker, is in this movie as well. I forgot if this was a prequel or a sequel. There is a third one out. I have not seen that one yet. I'm looking for it out there. Uh, comment down below if you've seen the third one and if it's any good or not. But I did enjoy this movie. Then we have Star Trek Generations. Uh, great solid movie. I liked seeing Picard and uh, Kirk in the same movie. You know, if you're a fan of Star Trek, obviously, I'm sure you've probably seen this movie. If you're a fan of Star Trek or just getting into it and haven't seen this movie, I would suggest checking this out after watching Next Generations, just so you know kind of the storyline and why they're all there. But, uh, great movie. Then we have Star Trek First Contact. Out of all of these uh, Next Generation era movies, 
this was my favorite one with the Borg. Uh, the Borg were definitely some of the, well, I'd actually say the best uh, villains in the Star Trek universe for the next generation. You know, I loved it when Picard turned to Lacutus of Borg. So, worth checking out. Then we've got Star Trek Insurrection. Out of the generation uh, Star Trek movies, this was probably the worst one. It was still good, don't get me wrong. But it just was nowhere near as good as the other three in the next generation uh, movie series. And then the last one we got is Star Trek Nemesis with a young Tom Hardy playing the clone of Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, I liked this movie. It was a lot more tense, a lot more violent than the uh, previous movies. The director did a great job at doing that. Uh, gotta love the Romulans. Uh, then we have White Noise with Michael Keaton. Great original idea. Michael Keaton does a fantastic job in this movie. 100% worth checking out if you're a fan of horror and sci-fi. Uh, then we have White Noise 2. And I actually enjoyed this more than the first White Noise, to be honest with you. And this was one of those straight-to-DVD releases as well. That's why, you know, you don't always have to sleep on straight-to-DVD DVD releases. They are a risk, you know, as far as uh, whether or not they're going to be good or not. But you can find some diamonds out there that are really, really well done. Uh, then we have Sphere. Loved this movie. Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone, and Samuel L. Jackson did an amazing job. You know, very tense, very, very, very good sci-fi movie. Barry Levinson does a fantastic job directing this movie. Amazing cast. Just great, great movie. Check it out. Uh, then we have a classic Contact. Uh, great movie, great story, well written. Not a fan of Carl Sagan, but, you know, did a great job with, uh, with this. You know, Matthew McConaughey and Jodie Foster work amazing together. The cast is ridiculously good. I mean, this is one, if you've never, you got to check this out. This has got to be on everyone's list to check out. Kind of like Die Hard. Uh, then we've got a classic horror movie, Ghost Ship. Absolutely love this movie. Uh, super tense, gets my blood pumping every time I watch it. The story of this movie, too, is, you know, as to why this ship is so haunted is absolutely amazing, and they unveil it through the whole movie. I mean, this this is, this is what a horror movie should be. It's got story, it's got acting, you know, and it's got reasoning behind it. It's not just blood for blood's sake. Absolutely love this movie, and the ending was even one of the best endings I've seen. Uh, then we have Frequency with Dennis Quaid and uh, Jim Caviezel. Love this movie. I remember watching this when it came out. You know, uh, I don't think it did too well in the theater. But it's one of those kind of flew under the radar sci-fi-ish type of movies with, uh, you know, communicating through time, trying to change history, stuff like that. But, I mean, Dennis Quaid, I love Dennis Quaid. You know, especially around this time is when he started to get into his own here. But, I mean, uh, the cast is amazing. The story is great. Very well written. Very well directed. Everything about this movie is good. Then we have the Rob Zombie Halloween movie. Absolutely love this movie. Out of the two Rob Zombie Halloween movies, this is the best one. I actually enjoyed this compared to the original Halloween movie as well. Because, you know, it's a big dude who actually runs. You know, it's not just Michael Myers slowly stalking you. But, I mean, he's impervious and he can, he'll can he literally run after you. That scene when he walked out the door and everyone just thought he was going to slowly stalk him. And then he just starts chasing her down. It was like, oh, man, it's kind of like the first time you saw running zombies. Now you got running Michael Myers. 
And then of course you gotta have Halloween too. Again, like I said, nowhere near as good as the first one. Still worth a watch. But uh it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. But it's it it kind of uh kind of dropped the ball compared to the first one. But I guess Rob Zombie the studio didn't like the first Halloween movie, even though it did really well in the theaters. But uh Rob Zombie didn't want to make this movie. I guess he just made it to let the so the studio would let him out of his contract for the third one. But I mean uh yeah. I mean studios kind of seem to interfere in a lot of movies and say like oh this is the worst movie ever like World War Z but yet World War Z turned out to do fantastic in the theater and was an amazing movie. Uh then we have Unbreakable. Not the best in my opinion of the M Night Shyamalan movies. I kind of found it boring. I love Bruce Willis. I love Samuel L. Jackson. But just kind of, uh, I found this movie to be boring. I haven't seen the two sequels yet. I, uh, hoping I find them here soon. Uh, comment down below if you've seen, uh, Split or Glass. And, uh, let me know if they're worth getting or not. Uh, then we have The Fifth Element, classic Bruce Willis sci-fi movie. Love this movie. Bruce Willis does a great job. It sucks what happened with Bruce Willis with his aphasia diagnosis. Because I loved, even his straight-to-DVD stuff, it wasn't, you know, the best. But I still love watching Bruce Willis. You know, this, this is a movie for people to watch who are into sci-fi. If you've been living under a rock and never seen this movie, check this one out. You won't be disappointed. Plus, you got a young Mila Jovovich as well. Uh, then lastly on this shelf, we have Aeon Flux. Not that good. Came out the same year as Ultraviolet. You know, I like Charlie Theron as an action star. She is She's very believable and very good. But this movie was eh. It wasn't, it wasn't fantastic. You're not missing anything if you haven't seen this movie. As you can see, they got hands... Hands for feet. Yeah, Woohoo. But, uh, only average. But yeah, that'll do it for this shelf. Uh, if you like content like this, please like and subscribe. Your uh, support is much appreciated. I'm also on Letterboxd. The link is over in the uh, profile section of my channel. Otherwise, until next time, guys, have a good one.